Is there a way to rediscover the traditions of our ancestors and make them real instead of the imitations, those customs that we have today? Uh, for example, how we eat traditional food on Thanksgiving while watching football or have a Star Wars themed Easter egg hunt. How do we return to our roots when the traditional way we would have learned these things is gone? Love those Star Wars themed egg hunts. I know. <laughs> I know. I, great Santa Claus on a cross. Uh, uh, all right. Well, actually, it's pretty much the same as earlier. There are actually a lot of books that tell you about these sorts of customs. Uh, there's a German priest whose name escapes me right now. He was the uh, chaplain of the Von Trapp family. Oh, right. And he wrote the Christmas book, the Easter book, the Holy Day book. Yeah. Handbook of Christian Festivals. Those are the titles, and I can't think of his name. Yeah. But uh, they talk a lot. He talks in those, in those particular books a lot about uh, how the different days are celebrated around the Catholic world. But you've got things like uh, oh, uh, Joanna, Joanna Bogle's uh, Book of Feasts and Seasons, which talks about this kind of thing. There are a lot of books out there. Um, there's another one, again, I can't think of the author. She was a lady, she wrote a number of books, one of which sticks in my head, so I can tell you the title and you can look it up. And that's Christmas to Candlemas in the Catholic Home. And she wrote a lot of other books like that. But there, there was a period in the early 60s in particular, late 50s, early 60s, when a lot of American Catholics were interested in just this in decommercializing, regaining a, a, a sense of Catholic mm -hmm. uh, wholeness and holiness to their holiday celebration. Uh, you can't do it. I mean, you, you first purge the obvious stuff, all right? No Star Wars themed Easter egg <laughs> Oh, no. Yeah, I know. Uh, Thanksgiving, uh, I mean, turn off the, turn off the, uh, the, the game, you know? Uh, mind you, in, to my way of thinking, there's nothing that says Halloween more than a Twilight Zone marathon. But if uh, if you like, though, uh, watch some Thanksgiving themed movies. If there are such things, I don't know, Judgment at Salem or something. What? <laughs> what that? Well, that's, uh, Thanksgiving is a little hard because it's a uh, Puritan holiday. Uh, but as far as the others go. Just take the commercial stuff out. The other thing you might do is a series of holiday books, of books about American holidays, which was called, believe it or not, Our American Holidays, uh, by a gentleman, and now I can remember the name. Oh, good. Is that great? Yeah. Robert Haven Schaufler, S-C-H-A-U-F-F-L-E-R, Robert Haven Schaufler, or Schaufler. Uh, he wrote books about Christmas and Easter and Washington's birthday and Lincoln's birthday and Thanksgiving. You know, a mixture of civil and religious days. Mm -hmm. uh, but they were uh, collections of things about the day in question. There were sometimes exercises to be done in schools. Because uh, you probably are too young to remember this, uh, same for you. But it used to be in the schools, even in public schools, that they would have what were called exercises to commemorate a particular holiday, whether it was Christmas or Washington's mm. birthday. Okay. And this would, uh, you know, there'd be recital of several poems and singing of some songs and things like that. You would do that. Well, there you go. I, I did it for MLK. Martin right. Luther King. Yeah, I don't... You don't, you don't like Martin Luther King? I don't dislike him. <laughs> you don't... <laughs> okay, that's a very diplomatic answer. Well, I mean, yeah. I didn't know him. Uh, he went to the Highlander Folk School. You don't like what he represented? Uh, it depends on what he represented. Uh, if you're talking about... If, Civil rights. If, you, if, that's, if you see him as equality. representing... If you see him representing civil rights and equality and all that, I have no problem with him at all. If you see him as representing adultery and communism... Then I have a problem. Why would I see him representing adultery and communism? Well, because he was a known adulterer on the one hand, and on the other hand, because he went to the Highlander Folk School, which was a sort of a communist setup in Tennessee. 
Yeah. I mean, my dad was all for civil rights, but he didn't like Dr. King because of the Highlander Folk School. <sighs> okay. So, anyhow, back, back to the... Uh, back to the, back to the real question. Yeah, back to have. the real question. Okay. Uh, so, so yeah. I mean, you have to reconquer these things. Uh, the, these books, Evelyn Verger Beertz, whatever her name is, wrote a book on uh, A Movable Feast, I think it was called, about cooking for the different holidays. Oh, that was Hemingway. That's you what know. Hemingway called Paris. Yes, I know, but this was a different book. Oh. By a different person. Oh. Uh, anyway, there are a lot of these sorts of books around. Uh, you can use them to reconquer your own home uh, for the holiday. And, you know, ladies and gentlemen, so much depends upon what actually works for you. In other words, uh, see what really improves your observance of the day. For instance, um, we used to, in my family, we used to open gifts on Christmas, early in the morning. But the, the custom sort of developed of opening a few after we got back from Midnight Mass. Mm -hmm. Not many, just a couple of small ones. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't really know why that started, but it did. You probably couldn't just, you, you, you couldn't hold in your excitement, you just need a little, a little taste. Maybe. Dip your toes in the water. Maybe, but it became part of our, our family thing. There were small gifts, you know, never the big ones. Yeah. Uh, similarly, with uh, Jewish families on Christmas, they uh, frequently go to Chinese restaurants. Oh, like Christmas Story. Like Christmas Story. Although they weren't Jewish. But the reason for that is the Christmas or, uh, Chinese restaurants are open at Christmas. Right. So, uh, I remember reading years ago, a uh, column by Jonathan Gold, who's the LA Times food columnist, who's writing I really love, reminiscing about the Christmases of his, uh, of his boyhood and how the Jewish population of LA were divided in loyalties between two restaurants, one of which is God, but the other one of which I like very much, the mm -hmm. Twin Dragons. Um, you know, that was the thing. You were a Twin Dragon kid or you are the, the other thing. That was a big rivalry. Oh, okay. Yeah, see. <laughs> Everybody develops their own, their own Christmas customs. Uh, I mean, similarly for Halloween, uh, one of the things I always recommend that people do uh, is turn trick-or-treating into souling. Souling? Souling. Well, you see, in days gone by on Halloween, people would go from house to house asking for goodies in return for praying for the dead of that house. And that was called souling, as in S O U L, souling. So, so if I'm trick or treating, you give me a treat, and then I'll pray for you in return. Not for me, for my dead. Oh, for your dead. Yeah. So, that was called souling. Well, that died out, with, you know, at some point in England or in Ireland, wherever. Wow. But trick or treating is a sort of unconscious remembrance of it. And so one of the things you could do is turn it back into sewing. How do you do that? Uh, by putting into each little bag of goodies a little note asking for prayers for your dad. And when you get your little kids home with their booty, kneeling down as a family and praying for the dead of all of the people that gave you candy. People are going to... Well, uh, gosh, okay. That's interesting. People are so do watch. you actually do that? I do. I don't have kids, so I don't do the coming back anymore. Do you, uh, I put out a little notes. Has anyone there. ever said, I'm offended? Not once. Wow, that's a neat little little trick. Okay. Yeah, it um, is. No, uh, I mind you, I couch it in nice terms. I say, uh, I say, this is a return to the old tradition of souling, and will add even more to this magical night. Hmm, okay. So much is the presentation. Yeah. You can be obnoxious and annoying, and then people will Wait. react badly. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, you, 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 you little sinners, you think you're just going to get free candy out of me. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> well, you know, that's probably not a smart way to couch it. You catch more flies with honey. That's for sure. I know because I've had some vinegar outside my door. <laughs> so far, they're empty. Wow. Okay. I, so, that's how you do it. There you go.